find it. There we have Magnus, bit shorter hair, openings as trolley as ever. One nice C3, D5, D4. Yeah, bringing it back to the sort of uh, familiar rich these days, London slash various of territory. You've recorded something on the subject recently, haven't you? Yeah, the main thing not to blunder here is any sort of knight b5 trick. That really is the main thing you need to know about the Verisov. If you don't allow that, you're in good shape. Anti-Karo stopped it with a6. Yeah, and uh, the game has progressed somewhat further, so this being Blitz, I don't think there's much point in us discussing the the finer points of the Verisov, in particular the Verisov with bishop f4, which I think is uh, mild even by Verisov standards. But uh, Are you calling it very soft? I wasn't, but I am now, obviously. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, uh, I think Magnus generally should be uh, happy enough with the, with a position like this. He might even objectively have a, uh, have a little bit of a pull here, but also only one pair of bishops got traded off and there's a lot of play left. And uh, Rook c8, well. very deep move. I don't get it, but I think he removed his knight next move, which is what I was going to suggest. A3, <clears throat> knight f d7. Yeah, and bishop g3. Uh, without the rook on c8, bishop takes c7, e d5, knight d5, queen d5 would have won a pawn. I'm not sure Ooh. Magnus. I'm not sure Magnus would have even gone for that because it leaves him with a really ruined structure in the center. But it would have been an option. Uh, with the rook on c8, it's not no no longer really very uh, very attractive. And uh, the bishop went to g3, rook e8. Black's position is extremely solid. There are no weaknesses. It's a very very decent pawn structure. But it's not easy for Black uh, to, to to do much, uh, you know, in terms of constructive improvement. Maybe in some cases he might go for c c sixty five breaks uh, if they are uh, sufficiently prepared. But that's about the only active plan you can think of. The knight on b six is really not uh, a very attractive piece here. I think it was Tartakova who once said a knight on b six is always misplaced, and it was some other dude who said knights that defend each other normally aren't well placed. So black has two of the rules going against him here. Yeah, and uh, knight is working on it. Yeah, knight of six uh, allows before, but rook e eight blitzed out. Well, blitzed out is uh, is not really something I should be saying very much because most of these moves will be blitzed out. This being a blitz tournament, uh, but Hikaru immediately spotting that there is now counterplay available to him in the shape of a six a five, at least potentially because he declined to do it straight away uh, a five b five favoring light. And uh, instead he went knight h5, knight f6, uh, sort of passing the move to white and saying, okay, show me, show me where your constructive feedback is. Be more constructive with your feedback. Yeah, uh, queen e7 once again hinting at a5. Uh, Magnus played knight g2. You have to check a5, but I guess right now b a5. Take it. The, yeah, the knight will be hanging and it has no useful squares. And if this knight actually gets transferred from uh, f3 to c5, White will be uh, a, a lot happier about his situation. Yeah. That will be the one really good piece uh, you can base your play around. So Magnus. I'm starting to like this for White. Magnus hasn't won a classical chess tournament since Bilbao 2016. Is it too early for writing him off? Yes, no, maybe? Um, yes. Okay. Yeah, this is now very nice for white, obviously. Uh, rook a7 is a, an incredibly un unattractive move, but maybe the only move black had in their position to even protect the b7 pawn. And now uh, Magnus has the option of playing a... Yeah, I'm not sure about knight takes c5, but maybe Hikaru felt he, he was by now obliged to do it. And uh, white might have to play... No, but d4 is just very decent here. I think d4 followed by b5. He's fighting against b5 by going b6. Mm, might still work, but yeah, in some have positions, to calculate. In some positions it might, it might still work, but uh, here in particular I think it probably leads to uh, complete simplification in the center. But he does go for it. That's interesting because after everything comes off, b takes c5, b takes c6, rook takes c6, I don't think you, you are left with a lot. You can still play on, but uh, it doesn't look horrific for black. No, but he like still has to coordinate his pieces. He's like, sure, he but something like even maybe rook a a6 might not be completely horrible. Or you could go rook e6 or rook, yeah, he went rook g6 with the same idea, unpinning the c5 pawn just to uh, 
uh, try and completely eliminate everything on the queen side. Three against three, even with awkward pieces, will be very difficult to win for white. Sounds like topic of a book I'm working on. Drawing by unpinning. Queen b5, rook a5. Yeah, I guess he, he saw some tactical issues, but now the rook on a5 will come under Ooh. under pressure. Bishop c7 is a threat. I'm not sure I like I, I like rook a5. Uh, it's becoming a bit awkward. The queen on d8 is also uh, not great. Although bishop c7, you can play queen g5 here for black. But this looks very scary. Yeah, knight f4 might be very... No, knight for queen, queen rook b6, also yeah. Potentially. Queen g5, knight f4, though. I think this is what Magnus is planning. That's the idea. Yeah, and I think... Queen a8 has been played. Yeah, Hikaru spotted this. And queen a8 is a clever move because it more or less forces white to trade. But, yeah, with the 97 check, black, black did end up losing the c-pawn. And this will not be a, 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 an easy draw, although... He's trying to exchange the bishop, probably. Yeah, I think the, the, the four rook game is probably his best shot. But it's... With the rook on c1, yeah, this might not be, this might not be easy to hold at all. Maybe knight b4 is a better shot here. Try to establish some kind of a blockade. I went rook c6. Yeah, that's mm. that's not better that's, version. Yeah, that's a much better version. And I'm I'm surprised by how fast Magnus went for this, because I think this might just be a draw now. King d6. Just, just king d6 check. followed by. Oh, he's fishing. But yeah, he's trying to tr trying to create weaknesses on the king side, but just king e7 here and then return to d6. Mm. Although now pawn endings might be lost, like king g3 here. Yeah, Magnus immediately spots the difference between the previous position and this. F5, H4 here, I think you can take. No, takes, takes, takes. I can't calculate. Takes, takes, no, takes. No, F4, F4. F4 probably wins, yeah. F4, F4 actually. I was wondering, yeah. Uh -huh. I think F4 kind of wins. But maybe uh, by this point, uh, there was already not, not a lot of choice for black. Takes, takes, F4. I think G4 loses. But hang on, no. Maybe, maybe you can run towards the G3 pawn. King H4, King G5, King G5, King E4, G3, King F3. That probably is a draw. These guys calculate quite quickly. Yeah, but also black has absolutely no choice. Sure. Okay? The whole line comes uh, at a lightning pace because it, it's just completely forced. So from a certain point on, I think a very well played game and uh, Hikaru defended what at some point uh, looked a horribly unpleasant position successfully. And holding any worse endgame against Magnus is not an easy, yeah. easy feat. So good so, job, Hikaru. Uh, not the easiest pairing in the world, I guess, for both of them, for, the, for, for round one and a... Uh, well played game. In other results, uh, we see that this is the final position in MVL against Kramnik, and MVL won with White. So he is uh, the early front runner potentially. Uh, Sergei Karekin has beaten Karana, Karana uh, with White, and uh, there's a ton of decisive games apart from the game we we come covered. on, Fabi. Rook g4. Well, the position the position already is completely lost. You have you have a feeling, and Rook g4. Mm -hmm. You know, if it works, is the only chance. Black has to at least spoil the white structure, but he yeah, uh, loses a rook. Loses a rook. There is a tactical drawback, and Lev gave mate on. Oh, on, I've seen this trick. Yeah, Lev gave mate on the board to to Wesley in some kind of a theoretical Queen's Gambit decline battle, seemingly from what I can see from the opening. And we're missing one more game, I think. So half out of three for the Americans, scored mm. by Hikaru with Black against Magnus. Yeah, interesting. And uh, uh, Anangiri uh, looks like Vichy was pressing with an extra pawn, but bishops generally hold these positions quite comfortably. And by pressing, you mean he agreed to draw instantly? Not instantly. I think they've been playing this uh, this endgame for a while. This looks like a marshal gone slightly wrong, but not wrong enough to lose. Right? Yeah, and you move around. Yeah, I think. In this position, in particular, if, you, if, the, if the knight goes somewhere, bishop f1 is just tremendously unpleasant. So, yeah, there's just not a lot white can do. Mm -hmm. So, not not a premature decision by by bishop to repeat. So we have two games drawn and three uh, early leaders: uh, Sergei Karekin, Levaronian, and uh, uh, Maxim. On one out of one, mm -hmm. and we probably have pairings for round two somewhere, but we do. I would not bet on that. I think they're up on the website. It's just that we can't possibly access the website as fast as uh, some of you out there watching can. Um, yeah, they will play more games in round number two. Total, they will play nine games. It's like the real thing, just with three minutes plus two seconds 
increment instead of 100 minutes plus no increment, which they will have in the tournament. Yeah, and there was uh, there were already some complaints about that. Uh, it's not that this time control has never been seen before, but I've seen some uh, outrage posts on Facebook saying that uh, if there is increment, it should start at move.